Hello, people. You may have noticed the status of a certain Andrew Chinny or Sinny. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but your spelling is a challenge. Um, has been going off, and they've been talking about boat people. Been talking about boat people in Australia ever since John Howard made it an election issue back in the days of the Tampa. Now, when you're talking about something with someone or discussing them, it's important to identify with their arguments to show that you've actually listened to what they've had to say. So, if they say, I believe A, you say, ah, I hear that you believe A. Well, I don't agree with that. I believe B, and here's why. And in doing so, you've demonstrated that you've given their arguments some consideration um, and put forward something that you'd like listened to and considered. Uh, that they can go away and think about. Um, so this is what I'm doing here. I'd like to address a few of the points that have been made in the thread so far, because it's very long, uh, and probably some of us are a little tired of reading, um, and I'm a bit tired of typing. I'll probably get back to it at some point, but at the moment it's easier to talk to my webcam. Now the first thing I'd like to talk about is the word illegal. It's not illegal to walk across someone's front lawn and knock on their door and ask to be let in. If they ask you to go away, it's illegal to stay. And that's exactly how it is for the signatories of the UN Convention for Refugees, of which Australia is one. It's not illegal to come to Australia by rocket ship, by hot air balloon, by boat, whatever. But it's illegal to stay once we've asked you to leave. Um, and I have no problem with that. If we don't want you here, if we've processed you and found out that you're not desirable or there's, you know, not the sort of person we want, that's fine by me. That's due process and that's fair. But to say it's illegal to come here and ask, that's actually wrong. I've actually spoken to a few of my lawyer friends about this and they say the reason Tony Abbott and other politicians get away with using the word illegal is because they're doing it as though it's an opinion. They have the opinion that it should be illegal. Um, whereas in actual fact it isn't, and they're inaccurate in that. I find it ironic that nearly nobody believes anything a politician says, but so many people are prepared to believe this thing, and in fact it's wrong. Anyway, just recapping, it's not illegal to come and ask, but once we've processed you and found that you are unsuitable to stay, it's illegal to stay, and I have no argument with that. Get the fuck out. Just out of interest, for those who are into statistics, we take roughly 200,000 every year. And about 70,000 of those are family reunions. Um, the problem with our 200,000 is it's not just 200,000 people. It's actually targeted at European Christian countries. Um, and that's unfair. It should be 200,000 worthy people, regardless of where they're from. The way we're doing it now is racist because it favours one group of people over another. It should quite simply be 200,000 of the most deserving people. If you look at the illegal arrivals, as people have been calling them, about 40% of the ones that come through our airports are regarded as genuine refugees, and the other 60% are declared illegal and sent home. Um, and about 95% of the ones that come by boat are uh, reg regarded or processed as genuine refugees and the other 5% get pissed off and that's fine. It's not fine to be inaccurate about what's happening here though. It's illegal to come and ask, it's illegal to stay once you've been told you're not welcome. The other point that was raised, which is quite interesting, was why don't they stay in Indonesia? Well, if you do a little bit of Googling and looking around, you find the Indonesians don't fucking want them either. They have them locked up in a detention camp. Now, this is where the concern of queue jumping comes in. This is a grey area. If you have a bit of a look at that, you'll find that um, there really isn't a queue. If there was a queue, people would fucking just use it. They do. It's a natural thing. If there was a way for people to apply for residency in Australia, and there is, if you're white and Christian, then that's what would happen. Um, a recent friend of mine from Portugal has been through this process. cost her about $5,000. That's actually considerably less than some people pay to get people smuggled, actually. Um, so, if there was a process, pretty sure it would just be being used. The fact that there's not a process, not a queue, that they can use, is why we actually have the boat people problem. We should be really clear about that. 
there was an easy, legal way for them to get here, they'd fucking use it. Because believe me, it's cheaper. And what's more, it's money in our pocket, not people smugglers' pockets. It's less cost to Australian taxpayers locking them up because we just process them. Most countries actually have home detention uh, while that's happening rather than jails or concentration camps. Um, and that's a shitload cheaper as well and very good for those local economies that adopt it. So basically what we have is a political football and it's being fueled by a lot of the people who are like of the stop the boats thing. They're costing Australia a lot of money. One point I would like to reiterate at the end of this is my point as a businessman that has worked in the Middle East and um, in West Asia to some degree. And that is, in the years I was there, we had a considerable advantage over the US because they were seen as a greedy, selfish country that was anti-Muslim. The sad thing about what's happening with our refugee policy at the moment is it's getting out of Australia and people seeing what's happening. I have friends in Jakarta who read the newspapers there. Um, and we are now also being seen as a greedy, selfish, anti-Muslim country. This is not good for business. Sure, we can put a barbed wire fence up around our country, but don't expect to sell our product overseas at a profit unless we're selling to Europe. Financial difficulties there. US, still a basket case. In fact, our best trading partners are not Christian white countries. We should bear that in mind when we're setting refugee policy. It's really important for us to look like good global citizens. Anyway, if you're still listening, thank you very much for your time.